Uh, hey, what's up, guys? Ryan here again. Um, my newest playthrough is, um, you can see your Swamp Thing on the Nintendo. Uh, when I first played the game, uh, I thought it was hard. I, mean, I thought it was difficult to control, but kind of weird to get used to. Um, you can you can kind of see it. Um, Alright, so this game works kind of on the same engine as um, Bart vs. the Space Mutants. Um, you hold the A button to run, but that's also the button you use to jump, so you can't, um, you can't run and jump at the same, you, you can't run and jump, but the way that they kind of fixed it is, um, when you jump and you hold the A button, you cut, you gain speed and momentum, uh, in the air. Uh, so you can see there, like, when I jump, I kind of lurch forward kind of quickly. Um, if you go up that little area, um, you get you know, items and stuff. I think they call those little red things batteries. Uh, if you get 50 of them, you get an extra life. Um, this game, obviously, is, this is a no-death run, so I don't, you know, I don't really go after the one-ups and stuff. Um, that, that little beaker-looking thing, that's your health. Okay, I, 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 uh, you start off with four per per level. Each level, I think, is has three stages. Um, your health bar from states to states carries over. After you beat a boss, you start with four again. Um, so, that little beaker thing gives you one extra hit of damage. The more you play, like, if you go up there, you get you know, a bunch of weird, you know, a bunch of items. Uh, the only items I've seen in the game are just those batteries and then the beakers for your life. Um, there's no, oh, and the, the, the slime ball. That's what I had, the, num the number nine up there in the corner. If I attack, I throw a slime ball, which is good because it's, you know, it's a projectile. I can put all stuff from far away. Um, The game is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you if you like exploring, you can do that in this game. There's a, a handful of areas where you can explore. Uh, I'll point. I didn't do any of it in this run, um, but I'll, I'll explain. You know the stuff that I found, like just while practicing and playing the game. Uh, oh, I, uh, I think I mentioned that to hold. You hold A to run. Um, yeah, there's a scene. You can see how uh, kind of how bad his punch is. It doesn't have very good range. Uh, and I'm not getting the health right there because I already have my six um, hit points. Or oh, now I have five. I just got hit. But um, I have my. I had the maximum amount of health, and like your life bar doesn't overfill. It just stays at six, regardless of how much you know the beaker or whatever you get. Um, now, if if you drop down here, you can actually drop down. It's like a whole extra part of the game. It's. Um, there's a couple one-ups, some batteries and stuff. Um, like I said earlier, I don't go after those only because this is a no-death run. I have no need for extra lives. Um, uh, and kind of an issue too is uh, you can't punch and crouch at the same time. So once you attack, you, your character stands up and punches. Now. It's not that that major, that, that big of a deal, except for in a couple instances where you're trying to dodge stuff, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, and if you've watched my my Simpson game, like my playthroughs of those two games, you can you'll notice they use pretty much the exact same sound effects. Uh, when you get hit, that little record scratch kind of thing. That's I don't know when the Simpson game came out, but. This is the same comp or this is this was made by THQ, but I think THQ was owned by Acclaim or the other way around or something. They're the same company, so they're using the same they're using the same uh, same audio like same sound effects. Um, they uh, THQ also used the same sound effects uh, from this game and from the, the Simpson games in um, Home Alone 2: Lost in New York for the Nintendo. So I mean. Uh, the jumping is its not exactly the same, but it's pretty close to the Simpsons game. Um, uh, those ghosts right there, you, you have to avoid. You can't kill them. You have to avoid them. Uh, uh, there's no, I mean, 
nothing really to say, you just go around and kill things, go to the right. Uh, now, when I first started playing, I mean, the six hit points kind of seems like a lot, but you don't get a lot of, like, invincibility time. When you get hit, you can you can get damage almost immediately after you've, you've just been hit, so that's what kind of makes the game a little tough. Uh, once you die, I think each stage does have like some kind of a checkpoint, like a halfway point, where when you die at a certain, after a certain point, you would just start halfway through the stage. Um, the number on the bottom left, it says 16, I think, right now? Yeah, right now it's 19. Uh, that's the number of batteries you've gotten. Like I said before, if you get 50 of them, you get an extra life. Um, there are there are actual one-ups in the game. I'm, actually, I think I get one. Uh, a major, major thing with this game is just getting used to the controls and like how the swamp thing moves and all that kind of stuff. Once you figure all that out, the game becomes a lot easier. Um, you, know, you get better at the jumps, you get better at everything, you just, you know, the game becomes more manageable once you learn how to play the game correctly. Which, I mean, personally, I think that's kind of a, that's true for every game. If you learn how to play it correctly, you'll do, you can figure it out. See, that was the one up right there. Um, so the, the, the platforming isn't very difficult, uh, all the jumps are pretty easy, you know, there's no real, there's, there's a couple areas, I think, in the, in the next, uh, next, next level that I'll talk about when I get to, uh, why they're kind of, why they can get frustrating, uh, so, and as you can see, I mean, it's simple, you just go to the right, and then you just take, you know, this level I don't think has very much you can do as far as diverting from the main path. Uh, if, it, if it does, I didn't find any of it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for, for the game. Uh, you, uh, if you're too slow, you have to stand in between the ghosts and then... Each boss fight, they take five hits. Now, um, as far as I can tell, the boss, the boss himself actually doesn't damage. You can jump into him and punch him or whatever, um, and he doesn't do damage to you. Uh, the thing that does damage is when I don't even think he did it, and I don't remember seeing it. But he'll turn into snakes and kind of split off on the floor. Um, so this is probably the hardest, um, and the game's pretty short, the game, uh, we're actually about a third of the way in already. Uh, now those hooks, those hooks can get frustrating. You have to jump pretty much right when you land on the hook. You have to, uh, jump. And if you don't, uh, your character kind of gets frozen onto the hook and it falls down. Uh, the wheels that I jump on, those are always, they will always stay there, they don't move. Um, the only thing to kind of worry about in this, this level is the, uh, the hooks. You have to make sure to just jump right when you land, you have to jump again. And, uh, always hold the A button down when you jump, because, um, once you let go of the A button, you go back to your, um, back to your, your slow move, you know, like your, uh, your real, like, bad momentum or whatever, I don't know what you say, like, you, you basically revert back to, like, your walking speed in the air, um, so, when you jump, just always hold the A button until you land, just makes everything, and, um, that, that's what makes all these jumps not very difficult, is because you have to super jump all the time. Frustrating your first time playing through it. Um, it's frustrating to play through it because everything seems like it's almost impossible. Once you learn how to play, like I said earlier, once you learn how to play, you learn kind of how the game works. Uh, uh, when you learn how, to, how the game works, the game becomes a uh, pretty enjoyable experience. The game's actually made pretty well. 
I like platformers in general. I'll give almost any platformer a chance. And this was one that... This is the most recent game I've added to my collection. So I haven't been able to play it up until now. I found it... I, it was actually in the wild. I found it at a game store. Which for the guy, I'm only... I'm, at this moment, like of this recording, I'm missing about 20 games of the Nintendo library. And Swamp Thing was on my list up until a few days ago. So, it's always neat to find stuff in the, you know, if you're a collector, it's nice to find stuff in the wild. You know, you don't have to go to eBay, you don't have to go through another collector, because you know he's going to, I mean, most of the time, people are just going to try to get whatever they can out of you, you know, financially. And that can just be frustrating to deal with sometimes. So it's always nice to, you know, jump in on like a, on a little store and you talk to them and get some games. Now of the games I'm missing, I'm missing some pretty major ones. I'm missing the three Panesian games, which were, uh, those are the, the pornographic Nintendo games that came out. Um, obviously I'm missing the World Championship cartridge that was never actually released as a game, but it's on my list because it's something that you know, is playable on the Nintendo. I'm missing the game Stadium Events, which is another pretty heavy hitter as far as collecting goes. And then Little Samson is the other major, major title. Everything else that I'm missing is kind of in the uncommon-ish area, I guess. Maybe between twenty-five to thirty dollars per cart that I'm looking at, which is not too bad. Yeah, I'm just, just kind of babbling to myself. There's nothing you can see. There's nothing really going on in the game. You just press your way through. In in this next, I think after I beat this is like the second like stage of this world or whatever. In the third stage, there is a there's a lot you can do with. kind of do it in this part of the game, too, but I, t I, I just tried to kind of err on the side of caution, because if you fall, you go pretty much all the way back down to the bottom. Uh, that's, that's one of the good things, is it doesn't kill you right away, like in, uh, in Bart vs. the World, there's a, a stage where you go up a wall, you go to the left, jump up, go to the right, and just repeat for a very long time. Now, if you're lucky, and you f if you fall, and you're lucky, you can land on a previous platform that you had jumped on. But if you're certain, if you're at a certain height, you only have like three levels to to fix it. And if you don't, then you fall and you die. Uh, this game is pretty pretty good at kind of allowing you to mess up, and it's not. I mean, it's annoying only because you have to you know, redo as part of the section of the stage. Not, it's not as bad as just killing you right away, which I do think is nice. Uh, this stage, yeah, this is one a stage where you can do a lot of exploring. Um, I go through this stage as fast as I can. I'm just doing a, you know, a quick no death run kind of deal, so I don't really do that much exploring or any. I don't think. So just know if you're playing this game, there's a lot, a lot of hidden stuff, little hidden areas to mess around with. something interesting happens, I guess it's going to be some silence. I don't like doing this stuff on myself. Yeah, I used to do live commentary, but I always found myself just getting mad. Like, when I was trying to do no death runs of stuff, I just found myself getting mad and just progressively more angry. So I decided to scrap it. I just scrapped the idea of a live commentary no death. Yeah, so if you go up there, you can get, uh, Oh, there's a flower, I think, in the game, and that the flower gives you all of your life back, or it gives you the, your six hit points. Uh, you'll see the you'll see the flower in the next level. So you know, here's level two boss. Now this guy, uh, his body doesn't hurt you, I don't think, but the spray hurts you. So you need to just be careful, jump, and hit him, hit him five times. And That's it. 
is. I'm going to go on to the third level. Now, in, this stage has some pretty cool stuff if you want to go searching. You can go in... If, there, you, if you see a big tree, you should be one coming up here pretty soon. I'll explain that. Okay, so that tree that I just passed, you, if you hold up while you're next to it, you can actually go into the tree. And you can hold, go up and down. And, hit the, and I think if you hit the A button, you shake the tree. In that particular tree, the first one, because there's another one up there that I just passed, you can go up there and find all sorts of weird items. I think a flower's up there too. In, uh, I, I haven't been into that tree, so I don't know if anything comes out. Uh, but if you go back to that fir the first tree I was talking about, there's, ne there's a one up in it. So if you're playing through and you don't care about dying, you just want you know, your extra lives or whatever, uh, jump into that first tree and you'll get an extra life. Again, I mean, I'm taking kind of the more boring route only because I'm just trying to beat the game as fast as I can. So, all the exploration stuff you guys can do on your own, I guess. section, watch out for the, the red blocks, because you can, you can figure out, yeah, the red ones are the ones that fall down, the white ones don't. Yeah, this actually was a gripe of mine too, well, there are, there's a lot of enemies on the ground, and you can't hit them, because as I mentioned earlier, you attack, you know, your character stands up. So, there's a lot of you know, stuff like that where you're just, you're just avoiding things. I mean, that, that's an okay concept. I don't know, that, kind of, that was kind of annoying. So, this is the, the last stage in level 3. I think. And watch out for the cosmic frogs or whatever they are. I played this game for about say maybe a day and a half, and then I kind of discovered I was uh, I discovered I was probably going to be able to do a no death run of this one. So usually, I, mean, I, I know pretty quickly if like, if I've beaten the game. All right, so here here's the flower that I have, I've been mentioning here for a little while. So you go you hit up to go into the flower. You see, I got all my life back. That's that's a pretty cool you know, item you can get. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about. I was battling. If it was interesting, I would have remembered. I go into the flower just to just to replenish my life. Uh, to kill this guy, you go into the tree. And you can see you can see, uh, see where I'm at with the eyes. Hit the A button to shake the tree, and the goal is to hit him five times on the head with I'm guessing apples or whatever those things are. So there's that. Now he's dead. So here's the last stage of the game. Uh, I don't know how it looks on your screen, but those lasers go all the way to the floor. The way I'm looking at it, it looks like the lasers stop. They don't. So, again, this, this part of the game, this last level, obviously it's prob probably designed to be one of the hardest levels in the game. I still think the middle level, like in like the warehouse or the sewer system looking thing, that's probably the hardest level in the game. 
this isn't too bad. You know where to land because of those the pipes. You can see, like, I'm... I'm oh, there's another one. Uh, the pi I'm aligning myself with the pipes. I know there's going to be a lamp down there. So that's a little... something you can use when you're playing through this game for yourself. I kind of started freaking out a little bit because I took so much damage for no reason. And then you have the random blocks that you know, fall, and the way, like for how slow he is, I mean, it's just it's almost impossible to. Move. You just have the only thing you can really do is just keep and maintain movement in order to avoid that kind of stuff. So he, here's the fastest way I've, I figured out how to get to the final boss. So you just jump to the right there, try to land on the, this area, go all the way to the top, and jump off the side. Now, what happens is you end up uh, basically bypassing the whole bottom, that whole bottom section, and you pretty much land right where the boss is, which is always convenient. So with this boss, uh, the yellow ball doesn't hurt you itself. The lightning does hurt you. But the ball does not hurt you, so you, know, you don't have to really worry about the ball hurting you. Uh, he, 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 the, this guy, will he, he appears in five random places. You have to punch him. If you don't punch him, he sends out like a three skull attack. You spread Like a spread gun kind of attack thing. Okay, so that's the end of the game. ending in a little sequence, and uh, I'm going to actually cut off my recording now, just because I have nothing really else to talk about. So, uh, thank you for watching, uh, rate, subscribe, or whatever, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, again, these are all done using an actual Nintendo with the actual cartridge, no computer safe state nonsense, it's just me on the couch, playing video games, so, uh, again, I appreciate it, thanks for watching.